Welcome back to the Terra Drome, episode seven. I'm Travis Moody from A Toy Kind of Mood, and I'm back with the boys from the last Terra Drome episode. Ryan Sweeney, what's going on, my man? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back to the Drome. We're okay. Uh, Tony, 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 back just straight out of work. Anybody straight out of work, man. This I morning gotta... or what? Man, yeah, I had to get out of that 114 degree weather from from the parking lot to the house, man. Holy Phoenix, Arizona! Wow. <laughs> well, you clean up well. I don't see the sweat, so you well. that hat's catching it all, baby. <laughs> That's what's up, Tony. And uh, we got a special guest here. Might have heard of this what's guy. Might have heard of this guy if you like GI Joe stuff. I don't know, a little guy named uh, Carson. My taxes. What's up, baby? What's going on? How y'all doing, man? Thank you for having me on. Appreciate okay. it. It's a, it's a nice little break in a, in an otherwise work filled weekend. So oh, nice. my, my Michelada would like to cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Make it happen. There we go. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I think I, mm -hmm. I messaged you a couple years back being like, what's up with the books? Oh, they're sold out. All right. What's up with the hardcover book? Oh, it's coming. Oh, it is. I prefer <laughs> hardcover. And then here we are two and a half, two years later and uh you know i think that's away. part i think that's part of the reason that the omnibus hardcover kickstarter went so crazy was there was a lot of people like you man that were hitting me up on a regular basis saying hey man where can i buy those books and i'm like those soft cover books they were ten thousand a piece and there were six of them so that's 60 grand and in that slip case was seventeen thousand dollars for a thousand of them right i paid 17 bucks a piece for those there was wow. no way that i could have put another seventy seven thousand dollars on the table to reprint those so we just had to we had to wait and and make our plans and you know do work toward it and then once we announced the hardcover that thing went gangbusters it was amazing so yeah. dope but we're not here to talk about books or anything we're talking about this big crowd fun thing that happened pretty recently and that is the Hasbro Haslab Cobra Hiss. Uh, <laughs> I'm right. in five. I'm in five times, man. Let's right, go. that's why we have you on. You bought five of them, so let, let, no, we're joking. Well, we're talk they, about they haven't them. they haven't charged me yet, so I haven't. It's like Amber Heard with her settlement, right? She didn't really <laughs> donate that money. <laughs> she like you know, she committed to, but did she really do it? No. So I'm I'm backed in for five, though. I'm loving right. this tank. Yeah, no, we're here to talk about Operation Recall, but let's talk about the Haslab anyway. The hiss. So we got you yeah. know we got the newest stretch goal. Of course, the retro Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. So yeah, give us your thoughts on that, Carson. I mean, I'm good with it. I, I know there's some people that are disappointed that the retro Cobra Commander is kind of stuck behind this paywall of $300. But if you look at what you're getting for $300, a giant classified hiss, mm. all the attachments, all the armament, the kind of retro panels, the retro canopy. I love the gold wing canopy. Um, it's just a beautiful vehicle and all the figures that are coming with it, the fact they have the driver and then we unlock the tactician, the, the fact Rudat. they brought in, the yeah. fact they brought in Ron Rudat to do well, to pick from his color studies to decide which tactician uh, color deco we get, that's phenomenal. Um, obviously I'm a huge friend and a fan of, the, of Ron Rudat and the rest of the creators that worked on the brand. So for Hasbro to do something official where they're bringing them back in, that's like, I hope that's the first of many. And that's obviously a big part of Operation Recall that we'll talk about. Um, the unlocks lately have been legit. The female gunner with the extra armament for stretch three was awesome. I know stretch two people thought it was kind of weak sauce, but whatever. Uh, stretch three was amazing and stretch four Cobra Commander. I'm all good with it, man. Mm -hmm. I just wish uh, the Mickey Mouse logo kind of seems like a shtick to me at this point. It's like it was a logo that was an error that they caught and they corrected. And I just kind of prefer a retro Cobra Commander with the right logo. That's just my two cents. But everything else about it, I'm very happy with. But why not both? Because they're gonna they're gonna repack that. They will. They, <laughs> yeah, they'll re-release them. Let's be honest. It'll be on a retro card back before we know it. Ryan, so. I think you hit it right on the head. I think it's the perfect figure to add with this because this is a line of reuse and repaints because it has to be. It's still young and they don't have that big budget they had in the '80s. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see it again. But this is one of those exclusives where if you don't want it, you don't have to get it. If you get the hiss and you don't want it, put it on Evil Bay and make a pretty decent penny off of it. And, you know, it's just a smart move. I'm glad it's not, you know, a cardboard backing or bones or, or something like that. I think for $300, <laughs> it's just... R.I.P. Rancor. <laughs> Shout out to the Hasbro G.I. Joe HasLab team for two successful yeah. monster campaigns in a row. And RIP Star Wars has lab team. Like I just, 
that's two in a row, man. You guys got got to change, change what you're doing, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Just a segue here. We're going to do some Comic-Con episodes. Maybe this week we'll do a Comic-Con preview. Of course, Hasbro announced a bunch of panels. So it'll be, I'm hoping, I'm going to, if I go, be meeting Lenny and Emily. And I want to ask them, Anthony, because I'm going to be like, where's our uh, mobile missile system? Everyone's like, oh, MMS has to be the fourth or an ASP. Why, why do you? What did you expect that as a fourth tier, Anthony? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I didn't have any expectations because I'm like, whatever I think about, they're they're not gonna do. They had a figure and another figure, a canopy, and then a figure. Am I like, okay? Well, they're just loading figures on with this thing. I mean, I I didn't back it yet. I might, I might not. <laughs> I just, for that much money, for me and my little, you know, I have a small collection, and for that thing. To me, I mean, I dig it. It's cool. I like, you know, the people who want it. That's that's great. But for me, it'd be like a 350 plus centerpiece that's going to collect dust. I'm not going to play with it. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, I'll take a few picks, but I, I don't know. And then when that Cobra Commander came out, I said, I made, I went and made mine in one night. <laughs> 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 yeah. I said, okay, hell with that. Let me grab my, I had a, um, uh, a custom red skull I did with that body, you know, that Spider-Man noir ghost rider outfit body. And I made my, you've seen it. I made a Cobra Command. Well, that we'll see it out. on the next episode yeah. with yeah. a, a paradigm, yeah. Cobra Convergence. So there's another. Yeah. Hell yeah. It. Yeah. You know, I've been cobring it up big time. So no, it's great. It's just for me. I mean, I could get it with my golf winnings, you know, I go out my dad and his buddies and my buddies and boom, my golf winnings will pay for that. But it's like, man, I could, I could put a stereo system in my car and some speakers and stuff for that. <laughs> oh, like, sheesh. So got to have your anyway. priorities, man. Yeah. Oh, so it's all like, about priorities. Yeah, that's cool. But then, but that does open it up for them to create more, you know, get the vamp out there, get the asp out there, get a stinger out there. So, uh, hey, Great whatever. Point. It's cool. It's just people jumped on it. Man, my buddy Mark Van, Van Cannon from Gridiron Studios, you got 10 of them. Does he have two accounts? Because isn't the limit five? Yeah, oh, it, he's got son. his kids. <laughs> oh, God, Shout out he's to Quaid, got the engineer of Gridiron Studios, man. That is I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't end up with like 15. He's I just... know. And I'm like, you know what? I have to play my cards right. Hey, Mark, can I buy one off you? <laughs> 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 you got like 20 of them, dude. Jesus. You know, it's so. a crowdfund you could resell, and there's no shame. Yeah, in that and that's another you know. thing. It's a good investment. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But I don't want to get something cool and then flip it just for money. Yeah. But you can. I mean, you know, it's 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 really cool. You know, yeah. Um, I like the the blue outfitted what tactician or what what was the ones that you could yeah, change yeah. color? Yeah, yeah, it's a tactician. Yeah, the yeah. blue is cool. All it's yeah, cool. they're pretty much. What was your favorite, Carson? Your favorite color, uh, tactician? So I mean I really like the purple one, but Me too. I don't I don't want him to run with that because that's going to be Techno Viper's color scheme. It go. would make sense if he was like a Techno Viper in training. I mean if he's a tactician that repairs the vehicle and stuff, it would make sense to use that Techno Viper esque deco. But since this is classified and it's modern and it's sleek and it's just sick, I like the uh, dark gray and black one with just the little bits of red trim on it. You know, yeah. it's got a, he's got the red helmet, so that's oh, the that one's big pop of color. Yeah. It's, it's a red helmet, but yeah. the rest of them is like gray and black. And what I really like about that one is it splits up those really long go-go boots by having a color break. Right. So, so I think it's black go-go boots and then red up top, or red up top or maybe it's the inverse of that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've, I'll be honest, I've never liked the legs of 1983 His Driver. I, I thought the boots looked silly. They look like Baroness yeah. boots on a His Tank Driver. It true. was kind of weird to me as a kid. But, uh, but seeing it with the color break really helps that in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they were saying it was to protect the driver from all those short stops and all the hitting all those rocky roads. So they got those <laughs> thin guards. I read about that. Yeah. So Ryan, your favorite color can't be. I like the red and the black, but I, I really here. love the Raiders silver and black. I don't know. It's it just a Raiders slappy, but that silver and black just looks tight. But yeah. that dark purplish blue looks like rip it. And it's like, oh, yeah, I want another one. You know, Maybe that's blue. that's the yeah. thing I'm sitting there doing. Yeah, uh, we're gonna see a fifth stretch goal because we're already. I last I looked, we're only 120 people away from the 16,000. Mm -hmm. So what do you wow. uh, what do you think, Carson? We're gonna see another. What you think? Because we got a month left, right? I know what I would like to see. Uh, since I'm one of those five X people, 
I would like to see us have the option of selecting a color deco. That's part one. I've got part two. But for the color deco, you could offer a white one for the Arctic, cobra blue, black, and a red one. We've, we've had all those colors historically. I'd like to have those Perfect. options. I would get two black ones, a white one, a blue one, a red one. Uh, but then in addition to that, because that doesn't cost them any money, just four different color plastic. What I would like to see is little additional trim pieces. So for the Arctic one, you could have those um, little like blankets or whatever sleeping bags that uh, hooked onto the side of it, like they had in the 25th anniversary Arctic His Tank. I think you could add little differentiating pieces and obviously those would be molded in white. And so whatever you created for the blue one would be molded in blue. So those parts would be unique to those color decos. So you would truly get different his tank. Like you could make this into four or five different types of his tanks. Yeah, then I would actually keep my second one or get a third mm -hmm. if there were different mm -hmm. colors for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that would motivate a lot of people to get more than one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's smart. Um, so before we talk about the other major crowdfund, of course, uh, I could ask you, man, you're... You're all about Falcon. What'd you think of that digital render GI Joe classified Falcon? Oh boy. So, you know me, I'm a big proponent of the band, of the brand. I buy two of everything, one to open, one to keep sealed. I will buy at least two of him, but I've got to say shout out to Ray Murphy. This is my yeah. Falcon. And this is my Falcon. Definitely. This is head and shoulders above that digital render. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I think you guys are doing a great job on the line. And I realized that what you can do with a custom, you can't always do with mass produced product, but they didn't even try to use the Vietnamese uh, jungle no, boots, didn't. right? For right. the black and green. They right. didn't even try to get Vietnamese tiger stripe. I just said it like my dad says it. So my dad was in Vietnam for three years and he says it Viet monies. <laughs> and I just said it like he says it. And so I'm gonna correct myself when and if I ever do that. So. Uh, Vietnamese Tiger Stripe needs to be on Lieutenant Falcon. This is a defining attribute of Lieutenant Falcon. So yeah. shout out to Ray Murphy. I, I promote this figure all the time. I think it's just a beautiful work of art. And so it's going to be hard for me. Like, so look at the little airborne badge there on the shoulder. Wow. Every, everything's just, it's just beautiful. So the bar was really high, thanks to Mr. Ray Murphy. And uh, the digital render, they, they got some, they still, in my opinion, they still have some work to do. Yeah, I, Tony. I want to see, I want to see Tony. more complex tiger strike fatigues at least. For sure, Tony, you're friends with Ray Murphy, so talk about. Yeah, it. yeah. You got a Falcon Ray's, for us? Yeah, raise my boy. No, not yet, not yet. Uh, I still, have, I still got to get. Uh, I probably get his backpack from Muchas Gracias. He's got a real nice one. That's the only one I've seen. But yeah, I told Ray that that is the best. That is bar none. That craziest, kick ass <laughs> Lieutenant Falcon I've ever seen with the with the Vietnamese um, camo. And, I'm like, and I hate doing camo. <laughs> but he even uh, went in, when, when, there, when the camo comes up to say a pocket, yeah. he went in with an exacto and cut it. And then he yep. would cut the camo. And so the camo would like take a bend around the, the fabric of the pocket. Like he didn't just wrap it as it would fall around it. Oh, oh was it, is it, is it a dec are there decals? Yeah, yeah, oh. they're well, or like tampos, whatever you not not tampos, water slides. They're water yeah. slides, right? It's must use bad mother then, because I it's know it's insane. A lot of that stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, paint that freehand. Yeah, may, maybe you guys can see it with. Uh, well, let me get this crazy camera. To no wonder. Ray. All right, so if you look at the pockets right there, you can see how the camo uh, takes a little detour. As yeah. it hits that, as it hits that seam, it moves a little bit. So, dude, he's just got an insane uh, attention to detail. And yeah. I realize, like, again, I'm sorry, Hasbro. I realize you can't recreate that in mass production. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But so, like, I'm spoiled. That's that's the end of my answer. I'm spoiled. Thank you, Raymer. But you're still gonna get a Falcon. <laughs> you're still gonna get two. I'll still get two of them. Yeah, no exactly. doubt in my mind. No oh, doubt yeah. in my mind. So that that like awkward. I know I'm gonna get four of each because two will be customs, two sure. one will be to open to keep and regular, and then two to be customized because I'm gonna want to redo that camo to match yeah. the original Falcon. Because it's kids of the 80s, we those guys were all Vietnam vets, right? So yeah. you gotta have that that camo mix. It's gotta be okay. right. Perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna make one and I'm still gonna buy one and come out because they you know, the customizing, you know, the fodder and all that stuff you can do. I mean, it's still fun to make one, but uh, when they, it's going to be a while before we get that guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Things yeah. are getting pushed up. Uh, yeah. 
It's gonna, is it going to be a while before I get my hands on the Collecting the Art of G.I. Joe book, Carson? When are we getting yeah, so, this thing? I, well, have you been reading the updates? Not to put yes, you on the spot. Yes, of course. Okay, email, October, email. October, so, October? So, no, no, no. It was originally December, and we put three different printing options in front of the community. So two were North American, and one was produced in Hong Kong. It's managed out of San Diego. So the community voted 90% for the third option, which is printing out of Hong Kong, which pushed it three months to March, April of next year is when that's gonna deliver. That's the downside is that it pushed it three or four months, but they were totally willing to accept that because what it got them was the larger size that could not be produced in North America. So basically our North American vendor sold us on doing this larger 13 and a half by 14 and a half size. And we were super excited to announce that to the backers. And then we got into like fleshing out the, the scope a little more. And they were like, oh, I'm so sorry. We can't do more than 160 pages at that size. I was like, are you kidding me? My book is 640. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, like you're missing you're missing the boat by quite a bit there. So, uh, so I mean, we just went ahead and started scoping. And I was lucky that a, a friend that had just put out a book on uh, collecting vintage, the uh, vintage collection Star Wars stuff had had a good experience with this vendor. And so I started uh, communicating with them immediately. And I was able to scope stuff and they sent me print samples and I've got the dummy book now and they're the right vendor. So I ended up with the right vendor anyway. I was lucky that the community was willing to accept a slight delay so that they, they could get a much bigger and better product. So it got us the bigger book. It got us the clamshell case because if I would have produced it, this in, the, in North America, the clamshell case itself was scoped to be $60. Crazy. Oh. I'm selling the clamshell case, the book, the folder, and the 24 prints for uh, the, through the Kickstarter was 100. Right. Uh, with a Blu-ray. With a Blu-ray. With the Blu-rays and the DVDs for yep. 100 bucks. Like, 100, it, literally, cool. Mega the, peop the people that got in on the Kickstarter got a steal. No doubt in my mind. There are no margins, right? There is no profit. And I'm fine with that. Thank you, all of you, all 2,700 that backed it because your confidence in the project got me the seed money that I needed to make a much bigger and better product. And so yes. now the, the pre-orders that were taken on 3D Joe's, they include the cam clamshell case. They include a 640 page book that's 13 and a half by 14 and a half. Wow. They include the folder with all 24 prints, 12 backers choice and 12 editors choice. Everybody, regardless of whether you're a Kickstarter backer or a pre-order backer through the website, you all get that same package, right? The Kickstarter backers get the lower price and they get the DVDs and the Blu-rays for free included with that. So that's the that's the difference now. So we got to get some margins. That's why the price went higher on the website. Right. Of course. Can we see some of this stuff? Heck yeah, you can. So I mean, the big box. So you can see the that's the soft cover slip case, which was already yeah. very sizable. That was like a six pound deliverable with all six issues in it and the double box slip case. The clamshell case that I showed off at Joe Fest. That's the so 13 and a half by 14 and a half is the book size. So 14 by 15 roughly is the size of the clamshell case because you got to make a little room for the materials. Um, so what I'm going to show you is the mock-ups that I put together for Joe Fest. So these are digital prints of our artwork already in the templates. This is a one-to-one -one scale. So this is the dust jacket. Like, look how much you got to move it just to see the whole thing. <laughs> it's crazy. So this is uh, 13 and a half inches from here to here, another four inches on the flaps, uh, two and a half inches in the middle, another 13 and a half and another yeah. four. So I'm gonna do the math real quick. 13 and a half, 27, we'll just round that to 30, 34, 38. So this is 38 inches all the way across. Wow. <laughs> and you know, just 14 and a half inches tall, right? Cars so that's it's that's your dust jacket. It's literally a coffee table book because you can't put it anywhere else. Like, it's basically it it's a coffee table itself. Like yeah. you just add legs. <laughs> just just put yeah. some legs on the bottom. No so coffee that, will be put on that thing for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, this this thing is beautiful. It, it features every oh. major every major painter that contributed to the brand has that a paint, killer. Look at that. Has a painting represented on there. So. That was a that was a big part of that when I first started to lay that out because that that design has been tweaked quite a bit, but that design is basically what was on that slipcase right there, that double box slipcase. Yeah. Um, so this is the cover, uh, basically the same size. You just don't have those four inch flaps. Yep. Now the cover uh, obviously is going to have the branding printed on it. The dust jacket is going to have the printing on the outside of the logos and names credits, but on the inside it's going to be double printed. And you're going to take the names and graphics off of it. So it's just the raw art collage. So if anybody wants to 
dry mount that, frame that, hang it on their wall. It's totally appropriate for that. It's a, it's a gigantic, beautiful poster That's collage awesome. uh, featuring all the major painters. So one of the cool things since the Kickstarter did blow up and we had extra money was to do this art print folder. So this is a one-to-one -one scale of the art print folder. So this, I got a new Apple Studio monitor and like the camera always moves around. <laughs> it's a, it it's looks awesome, yeah. yeah. We could All see right. it. So anyway, this is the folder and it holds 11 by 14 prints. So this is 11 inches, a little more than 11 inches wide, 11 inches wide and 14 inches tall. And then this is the fold line and that tucks you know, inside right. to hold the yep. prints in place. And so what you see on the inside is the 12 editor's uh, choice or backer's choice selections and then the 12 editor's choice selections. So you get a good mix of Hector Garrido, Doug Hart, um, Earl Norum. A lot of people don't know Earl Norum did a lot of Joe art, especially in the mid to late 80s, 87, 88. He did some package art. He did a uh, Hydra Viper, Road Pig, I believe Charbroil. So I went through all the package paintings with Doug Hart and we tried to nail down who each painter was. So that'll be much, much more included in the new Wonderful. Omnibus hardcover. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's some beautiful paintings in here. We got more variety in the editor's choice. I mean, obviously when you put it to the backers, you're gonna get more people wanting early 80s stuff, Hector Garrido stuff. And I, I absolutely love that too. But I wanted y'all to get a mix of things that might not have seen print, like this uh, C set by Doug Hart or something from like peripheral products like the Tyco train set from Bart Doe. So the editor's choice was our way to kind of diversify what, yeah. what was shown. Yeah. yeah, I really love the updates that you got on the Kickstarter. Like we got the whale breakdown and how everything got <laughs> restored. And then the, I watched <laughs> that flag art uh video you did man that was <laughs> that's intense stuff dude at the at the start of the video my voice sounds like chipper i'm, I'm my normal self and at the end of it i'm like okay we made it <laughs> yeah. I'm, all, I'm all burned out my throat's yeah. dry like i forgot to drink water you know i remember that was a i did nine hours on it i believe the first edit and then when i did that time lapse video that was just the second edit and that was another eight or nine hours mm -hmm. so all together i'm comfortable saying it was at least 18 hours of restoration time on the flag so that's the kind that of insane great. dedication that restoring yeah. the art of gi joe takes Appreciate and uh, shout, shout out to Chad Huckle because he's been there with me every step of the way doing the work with me. Yeah. So this is the uh, DVD case, right? So this is going to have the Blu-rays and DVDs. Oh, nice. So oh, there's wow. going to be there's going to be different action figures in each of these slots. The figures oh, are going to be representative of the interviews that are included within. So Falcon won't be there. That's representative of me. He'll be inside the collector's case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the clamshell case has spots for. Four, eight, twelve. I think we've determined twelve figures are going to be in there. Oh, great! And so, so Falcon will be in the clamshell case, but in this, you'll have um, figures that are representative of Kirk Kazigian, Ron Rudat, Doug Hart, Ed Morrill, Bill Merkline, the people that are on the videos. Right. Those will be the ones that have figures representative. So obviously, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it's supposed to take you back, back to pocket nice. control. Yeah, I don't yeah, think so, we've seen. I don't think we've seen this before, right? Have you shown this? I put, I put it in the update, but it was a uh, you know it was very small, and it was yeah, part yeah, of a yeah. much, part of a much larger update. I cool. my updates on collecting the art of GI Joe are pretty comprehensive because I only do them every couple of weeks, and so when I do them, I try to catch you up on everything at once, and so they can be pretty intense. All right, it's time for uh, Operation Recall. Cheers. Cheers to the recall. Cheers to the recall. So Ryan, you back, you back part of this, right? So what do you think of uh, the campaign so far? So I'm not a three and three quarter inch collector anymore. However, I'm asking. <laughs> that crazy man named Carson got me to go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to back it. And awesome. then you're like, Rotello's an add on. I'm like, okay, well now I need Rotello. And then I watched <laughs> your, uh, your Joe Fest video and you brought up the, the kids. And I'm mm -hmm. like, damn it, now I need shh. 
oh, I'm like, okay, now I'm up to three. And I'm like, I'll be up to four. And I'm like, okay, that's gotta be, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll probably, but it, it was, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. Absolutely amazing. Seeing what you did with all of those, you know, those creators from back in the day, seeing the hard work they did, it just blew me away. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And before we you. break, before we go down like wave one and some other ones, like let's see the figure 33 years in the making. Let's, can we see right. where well, this is a yeah, custom focus show? This is a creation. Right. Let's see the process of Rotello and Homer, man. So I figured I would skip right over the Ron Rudat drawing type uh, portion portion of the production. But if you want me to do that, it's it's in a folder and I can definitely do that. Right. But since customizing is a very tactile, hands-on, three-dimensional experience, I thought we would focus on Let's the tact, the three-dimensional portion Absolutely, of this. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, so this is the Bill Merkline sculpt, uh, original, one of a kind. Uh, I had to have this. Um, you know, resin copied, and I was so terrified to let this out of my possession. This took Bill Merkline two weeks to make. I lived in his house for the two weeks that he made it. I was staying in the guest bedroom upstairs, and uh, you know, we just became good friends. He's got really good taste in music and movies, oh, and uh, cool. loves to, loves to talk about history and uh, boats and marine life, and you know, just he's got he's a man of different interests. And so, what we have here, uh, according to the design is three smoke grenades those would be the you know three colors red yellow blue to indicate different things yeah, that, that was Kurt's indicate. idea right it was yeah that was part of the revisions notes and kirk brought a lot of ideas to the table that's so that'll so be great. part of the, <laughs> that'll be part of the documentary that that's yeah because so he's not he, he's not just a marketing guy he's a really smart intellectual yeah. and creative individual and so anytime you talk with him he's going to make concepts better so that was part of the fun of the process was seeing what he brought to the table so we've got concussion grenades up top here, and then we've got an infrared sensor right here, um, you know, different straps and stuff. So it was cool watching Bill do this because he started out by just, you know, you have this naked buck under you, but then you build the anatomy on top of it. And then you start layer, layering the clothing on top of that. And then you start layering the straps and the accessories on top of that. So it, it literally, you were watching it build out and I filmed the whole thing. So uh, you'll be able to see all that kind of as it plays out. The thing I really love about this, one of my favorite sculpt details is this flare gun right here on his hip. That's, it's just an amazing bit of sculpt work. And you have to make sure there's no recesses where the plastic will sip in, slip in behind it, right? So that the, the mold has to be able to pull right off of that. So to be wow. able to make that three-dimensional object and it, have it look believable, but not have there be any kind of abscesses or concave spots there where a, a plastic pour would get stuck and not be able to release it from the mold, that was a lot of good learning material for me personally, sitting there with Bill and listening to his considerations about what things he could add detail to without uh, sabotaging the manufacturing process. One of the things I love about hand sculpts versus digital sculpts is every little part of this is gonna be unique. So if you have a pocket on that side versus a pocket on that side, no two pockets are ever exactly the same, you know? The, the two little pockets on his little butt cheeks there. If you were doing that digitally in ZBrush, you would sculpt one and then you would copy it and then you would paste it to the other cheek yeah. and it would just look exactly the same. These pockets have actually have quite a bit of variance to them and I'm good with that. That's the humanity of it. Um, so I was living in his house for two weeks and for the first 12 days, whenever he would tire out, he would have me tap in and sit at his table and just play, just, just work on something that may or may not be usable. And for the first 12 days, he would come back in and he would just he would crush it. He would reuse it, you know, or he'd throw it out or whatever. <laughs> like it, was it was definitely nothing usable. But by the end of it, uh, 12 days in, I successfully sculpted smoke grenades that were usable. So these little grenades right here are mine, oh, which is really, nice. really awesome. And then uh, I was actually able to do the knee pads on like my third or fourth attempt. I was able to, to nail these knee pads, which was a lot of fun. Nice. So that was a great experience, man. It's you know, once in a lifetime opportunities to sit yeah. there with really a sculpting legend. This guy did 70 GI Joes, but he also did a ton of other stuff. You know, visionaries, holograms, the visa hologram, the dove that's on all the credit cards. He sculpted that. Um, mm -hmm. he, he did a bunch of other toy lines. There's a exhaustive creator profile on 3D Joes dedicated to Bill Markline. If you guys want to kind of get a cross section of the different work that he did, but just a beautiful, amazing man. And uh, yeah, imagine, so I'm, I'm, imagine, you know, like you said, you're a 10 year old boy and you're asking Hasbro to sculpt the toy for you. And here you are sculpting your own toy with GI Joe 
creators. It's the crazy. people. I can't even imagine the feeling, dude. Yeah, no, it's it's been a surreal. Well, also like this all happened in COVID, right? So <laughs> the world already went crazy and was really weird. And then I just had this idea for this project because I was already working on the hardcover. The reason this whole thing happened was I was going to drive around to these people's houses and film interviews. Because all the interviews I'd done in the past, I'd driven to their houses, but I'd only recorded audio because I didn't want to intimidate them with the video cameras and the lighting right. and all that stuff. But flat that I started those interviews back in 2013 for 3D Joe's. By this point, we've known each other for six, eight years in some cases. I just felt more comfortable saying, you know, I do video for a living and I can film these and that would be awesome. And, and I felt comfortable making that ask. And they all said yes. So then I was like, sit down interviews are, are content intensive and they're useful, but they're not super interesting to watch. So what if we do something together? And then I just kept brainstorming. I said, like, okay, what if we started a figure from scratch and I film every step of the process? And they all said yes. So it was literally like that. That's where the idea started from. And I had this idea that I had submitted as a 10 year old for Rotello. And they, I told Ron, if you don't like the radio teletype operator with a carrier pigeon idea, just throw it out the window, yeah. <laughs> do something else, do whatever you want. Like I never wanted to be yeah. dictatorial. We're doing a Rashikage ninja, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so Ron, he came through. I didn't know until I got the initial ideation sketches if he was going to go with Rotello or he's going to do something else. And so imagine my excitement when I got multiple iterations of what Rotello and his backpack and his bird and his other accessories might look like. It was a dream come true for me. Um, and they all had such a good time with it that they expressed sadness that the project was over. It went, wow, that was actually pretty fun. I'm kind of sad it's over. And so, you know me, I've, I've been running 3D Joe since 2012. That's a decade of building an audience. Um, I've got 6,000 people on the email list now, which, uh, which have either bought posters or bought books or just signed up at the bottom of the website. And so I figured I could leverage that and, and take this out to the community and say, hey, look, here's what they did for me with my idea. What if you guys submitted your ideas and we made an all new action figure line? Right. And so I think I'll, I think I only put that out there for six weeks and we got 177 submissions. That's why I didn't get my submission in time. Yeah, yeah. I didn't give you enough time, right? <laughs> no, we'll talk about that in a minute. But hey, before we get to like yeah. Operation Recall, the wave one and everything, Homer, sure. Homer, 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 you said Here's my boy. you had two different pigeon designs originally. So you want to talk I, about that? I did. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, the second, the second pigeon design is packaged up. I could pull that out if we have a break. No, we're, we're, we're fine. But we're fine. You just tell us about it. What, I, what I'll hang with is, you know, so Bill Merkline had done the Visa Dub, right? This dude's a mastermind, like brilliant sculptor. And so I gave Bill Merkline, why well, I, I requested that Bill Merkline sculpt a dove or sculpt a pigeon for me. And he did. Um, at the same time, my buddy Adam, that did all the 3D design for all of the accessories for Rotello, had designed this brilliant pigeon right here. And so it was a tough decision for me because Adam did such amazing work on all the other accessories. I felt bad if we didn't utilize his work, but at the same time, I felt compelled to give Bill Merkline a chance to sculpt the bird. He's the piece of dove guy. How could you not? Right. And so I'm a big believer in putting it out there and letting other people vote on it or letting other people let their voices be heard. I don't ever want to be like dictatorial and just making decisions for everything. You know, I, I, I don't want to be the bad boss kind of thing. And so I put this, uh, I put, I sent them both to the paint master guy, Matthew LaCroix. And I said, Hey, look, man, I like the 3d sculpt for this reason. I like Bill's sculpt for that reason. I actually did a kit bash where I cut the wings and the tail off of Bill's and put it on Adams because I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought the wings and the tail were like more organic and more yeah. lifelike, like they were in motion. Whereas this one is more iconic or illustrative, you know, like he's very symmetrical and he's cool, but he doesn't look like he's in motion doing something. He looks like he's posing, you know? And so I put it out to Matthew. I was like, do you like the hand sculpt? Do you like the 3D sculpt or do you like the kit bash? And he chose 3D sculpt. And so that's that's what we're running with, man. Cool. And I mean, that's how I try to conduct things in general. I don't ever want to make all the decisions. I want to solicit yeah. feedback from people and I trust in, in their opinions. You right. Know? Yeah, because the community, it, it's coming right to your like physically as well. You know what I mean? It's one thing yep. to have fans, but now they're hands on as well. So let's talk about that. You had Ryan and us at Soul Eagle Guerrero, I think. Nice. Luchador, nice. right? Ryan, Dude, you I'm, want to talk about that? 
I'm happy to hear that because I fought for that one. Oh, it's so great. Ryan, you're, come on. No, with, <laughs> it's, we've never, I mean, we've had Sarge, but Sarge was the trainer. We never had like that wrestler in GI Joe. Actual wrestler. How can yeah. you not have yeah. somebody, either a bad guy or a good yeah. guy, have them come in and, you know, it was it's a no brainer. It's like I saw that one. That was the one. I'm like, oh my god, you get that one now too. I'm like, oh, come yeah, on. he's <laughs> sooner or later he's, you got the whole wave. He's just tons <laughs> of fun, man. He's just tons of fun, and and that's something I want everybody to know about Operation Recall from day one. We want this to be military fantasy. We want this to be fun, right? So, you, you know, you got a traditional uh, MOS right here, radio teletype operator. That's very traditional. And he's got the drone and he's got the radio teletype backpack with the uh, modular uh, communication systems there. He's got, you know, re realistic weaponry, uh, removable silencer on his six hour machine gun, removable mags. Uh, actually extra mags so one of the cool things about it is this backpack holds three mags on the side pouch right here right so that'll hold three extra mags and the, right. uh, all, all this stuff's functional so they the straps you know basically plug in on the bottom right so they go over this little loop at the bottom and then they plug in just with the pressure fit right up there at the top so that's how you get that on but it's still got the traditional backpack little peg you know so to fit on everybody and then the um, drone sure just comes right off and flies off so that's cool and, and Kirk, but, it, it's funny but rotello looks like somebody i've seen on your facebook <laughs> i just can't quite place it i've heard a few names i've heard a few names thrown around of who they think it might be but i think it may be somebody who's really close to you um, oh yeah and it, I, i'm thinking that you know i know your your dad and your grandfather were both in the military your, your grandfather was uh, brigadier general correct mm -hmm. and he also fought w with the afghans against the soviets in afghanistan that's correct what does your dad think of all of this uh so my dad uh has always been supportive of me i'm the apple that rolled away from the tree right so i've got a very strong united states army tree here my granddad was a brigadier general fought world war ii korea vietnam uh worked with the cia to do charlie wilson's war in afghanistan after that my dad served 28 years in the United States Army, was fifth special forces group, third group, and seventh group over that time. Also wow. helped st stand up JSOC, Joint Special Operations Command in the early 80s. And uh, he did 28 years and then he retired and then he did 20 years in Moore County Public School Systems. And then he went back to work for JSOC doing research. My brother has been in nearly 20 years now. He's a Lieutenant Colonel and his last full-time assignment was also with JSOC. So it's a, it's a crazy military family. It's a lot to live up to. Uh, but I've always been the creative one. I like to say I like to make things, not break things. And I accuse army guys of breaking shit. And uh, also, I also said I don't like to run and I don't like to be yelled at. And that's all they do to you in the army. So, uh, so it just you know, I went to Valley Forge. I did well there. I just didn't choose that as my career path. I need to make things every day. So from sixth grade to twelfth grade, I was drawing comic books. And my dad would take me to the uh, Heroes Convention in Charlotte. And he would sit there with me while Dick Giordano, the classic old editor, would review my portfolio and crush my dreams and tell me I wasn't very wow. good, you know? And uh, my dad would take notes on it. And then he would type it up at work on Monday and he would give me a printout for me and my friends of how we could improve, you know? So my dad was always incredibly supportive of me following a creative path. And so with the book series, I did a dedication to him. If you go to volume six and open it up, there's the introduction by Kurt Bazigian, and then there's my introduction and, and there's a credit to my dad with a bunch of photos of him, which is really cool. Oh, so cool. I think he's flattered. I, I mean, he's, I know, honestly, he tells me he's proud of me every time I see it. So that's how he feels. This is a different way of serving your country. It's still yo Joe, GI Joe, man. I mean, I think it's patriotic. I hope, I hope the Absolutely. military people don't look at it and think it's silly. You know, it's I think they think it's no, great. I, yeah, I think it's I think it's awesome. I, I know a lot of people that have gone in the military because of their love of GI Joe while they were growing up. Like, I honestly think the United States government should, you know, subsidize the brand, keep the cartoon on the television because that's an amazing recruiting tool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so now my dad's my dad's proud, man. He's very proud of me. Awesome. Well, we are too. Uh, we got more mm -hmm. toys though. Like so, uh, damselfly is a, is another one. You want to talk about that one? The enemy so, aerial assault trooper. 
Uh, so Ted Terranova is a brilliantly talented artist. He submitted three amazing concepts. I'm still fighting, not fighting, but I'm still lobbying for a second one of his that was also awesome. Uh, but Damselfly is just a, a really cool, I love her face mask. I love her uh, fatigues, her pants, uh, the strap-ons. I love the uh, grenade launcher that splits open in the middle and has these big removable shells. And then the shells go into her bandolier. So I'm always looking for like play features, action stuff, you know, cool accessories. And then her backpack is these two uh, rotor wings you know, it's got rotors on both sides and you press the button in the back of the backpack and it folds down. So it's compact behind her like dragonfly wings. I just thought, you know, from, from start to finish that concept was beautiful and amazing. And so I think the challenge with that is like, okay, how do we improve upon it? But I know the boys will, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you throw Kirk and Ron and Mark at it and they're gonna make it even better. As a so. big Casey Jones fan, as a former college mm -hmm. hockey player, I love the mask with the blue tiger stripe camo and everything. So it's really, really cool aesthetic on that. Yeah. So, and he, you know, he included a bunch of sketches with which had different masks concepts and they were pretty much all great. So there's, there's a lot to work with here. Uh, what I've spent the last um, 48 hours doing is going through and creating these packets, right? So this is the packet for Ron Rudat. Uh, just got these printed off at Staples. It's all legal paperwork, right? Eight and a half by 14s. Oh, there we and go. Yeah. Damsel flies right there on the top of it. So what was cool about this, this is the design me and you were just speaking about, but this was the design he included from when he was a kid. So this is his childhood design of Damsel Fly, right? Oh, that's so uh, cool. Obviously not called Damsel Fly at that, that time. It was a male, uh, but he, he picked this uh, Azure Damsel Fly as his kind of color reference. You can see how the wings tuck behind the dragonfly. And that's very much when you hit the button on this and these wings fold back, that's how the wings would tuck behind her. So conceptually, it's just it's just all tight, dude. Mm -hmm. It's just all really tight. Let me set this down and see if, uh, what's on page two. So page two are the sketches that he did. So there you see the breakaway grenade launcher with removable yep. rounds. You see the, uh, the functionality of the backpack wings. So this guy, Ted Terranova, amazing talent. Uh, there's some of the masks. Uh, some look more like skulls and some are more iconic. Yeah, it almost just, looks like a hockey mask, the last one. I like that. Yeah, the Casey yeah. Jones mask, yeah. So, and so yeah. I also wanted to include the photos of the people that actually designed it. So when Ron and Mark are, are working on this, they can see whose lives they're positively impacting uh, like they did for mine when they were working on Rotello. They got to see me showing up giddy at their house. Uh, I want them to also at least know what the people look like that submitted it to them. So I, once I uh, had the top 16 selected, I reached out to those folks and said, hey, congratulations. Uh, can I get your name as you want it to appear on the package, your age, your location, and a headshot? And so on the packaging, we're going to have credits uh, for the creators down here, right? This is, right. you know, how you have the cross sell with the figures up here. Course, so yeah. You're going to have that and, and hopefully we'll unlock all 18 figures. So you'll have that whole cross sell. We'll have a legit full year of product like they used to. And then down here, I wanted to not cross sell, but show off every creator that worked on it. So it's from figure designer to uh, like art director, Kirk Bizigian, uh design packaging. So this is Ed and Sean Morrill. Those are the guys that did all the operation recall packaging and the logo and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have, let's see if I can go across here. That's Doug Hart that did the painting. Uh, let's see, that's Larry, obviously, who wrote the file card, Larry Hama, Bill Markline, there's Adam, there's Mike. So Adam and Mike kind of tag team the 3D design stuff. Adam's a buddy of mine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What Adam Freeman, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And He'll then Matthew, watching. yeah, nice, nice. So, uh, and we'll be working with him a lot going forward. Cool. So I've, I've already been talking with him. Matthew okay. LaCroix uh, did the paint master. So that's awesome. And we this saw is the uh, Wolf Trooper today of Matthew. Yes, Matthew oh, LaCroix, it looks right? yeah. so good, dude. Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, so yeah. good. And then we got our manufacturing partner. And then oh, it was Red the Shadows Trooper, Trooper, not Wolf Trooper, right? Red Shadow. No, I think we, I think we saw the Wolf Trooper, the oh, retro no, no. Wolf Trooper. Okay. Yeah, but it's also, it's got the swap out head. So it's also Skeletron, Oh, right? Yeah. So that's, that's. No, so it's, a, it's an awesome figure. Yeah. And no, just that. to let you know, Ted does some great 3D prints and updates on Joe vehicles. He oh, has nice. his own YouTube channel. So it's, it's called Action Robot Punch, but he's like took a, a a bridge layer and, and added different parts to it to make it look more realistic. He did the same thing Fantastic. with uh, the the Mauler as well too. So 
See, and that's Great what I love place. about the community is there's so many different, there's brilliant people uh, because I think as kids, we were creatively inspired to go down this path of like polishing whatever our creative skill set is. If you're a customizer or if you're a diorama building toy photographer, or if you're an illustrator, or if you're a cosplayer that's building your own costumes, or if you're doing like archiving like I've done, every, there's so many talented people in this community that put all of their energy, let's be honest, man, we put all of our energy into G.I. Joe. We're all just, we've got this creative energy and it's got to go somewhere. And for whatever reason, we're channeling it into G.I. Joe and it makes the community so wealthy. Like it's just a, it's a beautiful tapestry of creative people, man. It's unreal. I think I showed you the list. I backed like nine yeah. crowd. <laughs> like if you count the backer kit, me being late on a couple of things, that was nine crowdfunded military right. toy G.I. Joe kind of things. It was like, in a year. year it's unreal, year. man. I, when you think of like uh, Ben Conway, who's a very smart business guy, runs his own modern furniture business, super sharp, super successful, and just had this creative energy and wanted this vehicle to exist. And now we're getting RoboSkull, which looks phenomenal. And all the peripheral figures and everything. It's just, there's so many people in this community that ha are tremendously talented. And we're all lucky that, that, you know, we've all as a collective chosen this brand to like funnel our energy into because look at all the cool stuff that's coming out of it absolutely so we got a few more in wave one but before that i'm on the kickstarter and we're at uh -huh. 100 174,250 so almost 175k here we go and we needed 120 so we're past that so we're almost what do we need about for the what do we need what so the next, the next unlock is the ninja so the yep. ninja's name i love this name it's shh <laughs> Because he's a you know he's a silent assassin ninja creeping in. It's funny because a leg and everything. Yeah. He's got yes, so he's missing a leg. He's got a he's got a robotic leg. So but cool. the kid the kid that Alexander that submitted it he's ten years old. I absolutely love That's this beautiful. because when I drew Rotello I was ten years old. It was nineteen eighty nine. I was born in seventy nine. So I was ten years. I was his age when I submitted Rotello and got my rejection letter. Now he had so I met him at Joe Fest. I was given this panel. And he got to come up and we got to talk about it and everything. Oh, nice. And I just knew like at that moment, we're making lifelong memories. Like there, there is no doubt in my mind, the four people that were in that room that got the announcement that their figures are going to be made by these guys. It's got, it's a lifelong memory. They will not forget that. And so Alexander uh, Mural is his name. Uh, he actually interviewed me for a podcast a couple of days ago. So that should be coming out this week. And I'm hoping that it syncs up with when Shh is unlocked because that would just be, that'd just be a great update. It's like, okay, so this kid's figure's getting made and here's him interviewing me about it. You know, it's, it's oh, just cool. gonna, no, you're, awesome. always, you're always looking for those uh, communication opportunities with your backers to like connect to the emotional part of it, the story of it. And that's like at the heart of Operation Recall is I had the best time with these guys over the last two years doing Rotello. And I want the community to have that experience. And so that's why we put it out there. It's not that Ron and Mark and Kirk couldn't, couldn't come up with another 16 brilliant ideas. You know, they could have. Um, they were just willing to do it because they saw how much like excitement that would bring to it. Mm -hmm. yes. So sh Shush is the, is the next one and he's coming <laughs> up at 180. So like we're, we're coming up on sh any day now. I was like, what's your favorite Operation Recall character? Shh, what? I'm just asking. <laughs> right. like, shh. No, shh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Let's talk. Let's talk about Breacher, the urban intervention specialist. He's a, yeah. a figure with an another figure with an animal, and you can see everyone right. got this one this week. Big Croc Master. Beautiful. I love that crocodile, man. And that's one of the things I'm like so happy about uh, the classified line that they've chosen to to get into the animals, and they're not just halfway doing them; they're doing them justice, man. That crocodile. Right looks incredible. He comes with a little baby crocodile too, but let's talk about how, how articulated that croc crocodile is. The toy photographers are going to have a field day with him. He's an amazing figure in and of himself. Uh, the fact that they named her is hilarious. Yeah, well, uh, so so I, I think that, yeah, Fiona, I think the classified team is very inspired. They're, they're doing their best work right now. And yeah. uh, we're, we're lucky to have them. They embraced our desire for vintage, you know, accurate uh, designs. And they're tweaking those and updating them. And I think up the perfect mix of, you know, modernization, but staying loyal to the original stuff. Uh, let's talk about Spirits Eagle Freedom. They did alternate wings so you could have different poses for it. Like they're not phoning it in on these animals, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, regarding Breacher, so 
Breacher was submitted by Gabriel Mangum, who's a comic book artist. And so since, uh, since several of these people have been selected, they've sent me, I, I don't even want to call it fan art because, you know, it's professional looking, like it's really good stuff. And yeah. so Gabriel's been sending me some photos of Rotello or some illustrations of Rotello. I'm sure I'll be sharing that. Uh, Chad LaForce, uh, who submitted Cadaver, who had that brilliant logo that we're going to be rolling across several of the enemy combatants. Um, he sent me several images, which are gorgeous. And I look forward to using those in videos and promotions going forward. Yeah, not only did he get his figure, he got his logo, which could be the enemy brand. You mentioned yeah. uh, Los Cagadores, Castigadores, is it? Los Castigadores. That's right, that's right. So uh, Castigadores. Castigadores. Uh, yeah, yeah Los, Los Castigadores. It's, yeah. it's basically the Punishers in Spanish. But so this guy... Um, he, he Chris Scott right let me let me make sure I've got that yeah right. it's Chris Scott yeah yeah so Chris did this paintball outfit mag fed paintball so everything looks legit my dad's an army guy and he saw a post on Facebook from Chris Scott he's like oh so he's actually an operative like he's done some I was like yeah that's paintball gear <laughs> but it it looks legit and so really uh you know we're obviously not using any of the Punisher motif we got to throw that stuff out but if you take the logo from Chad LaForce from his cadaver concept and throw that on there, we're starting to get into an enemy brand. And then if you look at the face mask for Damselfly, which looks very iterative of Similar. that. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then if you look at the Joe Fest video and look at figure 16, that's got a similar mask that came from someone entirely different. Uh, we've got a common theme there. And that's one of the things that we were kind of looking for as we were selecting from the 177 entries which ones we wanted to, to build upon. We definitely were looking for emerging themes and that's that's kind of one of them. Yeah, it's kind of your own Cobra in a way. So that, well, you have, to have, you have to have an enemy organization that's out to kill your guys, right? There's gotta be somebody to fight. And so we've already got the storyline drafted, man. My, my good friend, Joe Goldston, uh, he went with me to Massachusetts for the meeting where we sat there for three days and went through all these concepts and had the creators in and narrowed them down. And so he went with me to that. And then he came with me to Joe Fest and he filmed the panel and saw, you know, the interactions with everybody. And he just caught the bug. So he went home and started writing. And this guy, he's just brilliant, man. He, he catches a fire inside and just, just starts typing stuff up. And before you know it, he's got probably a 30 page comic book script drafted, you know, with like scene setting elements and quote dialogue stuff ready to go. And it's good. Like it's not, he just didn't just, you know, vomit out some garbage on the page. Like it's good. Uh, so we've gone back and forth and back and forth, marking it up, making revisions and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if this is going to be like we talked about in the panel. I don't know if this is going to be an audio book with some keyframe illustrations or if it'll be a fully fleshed out comic book. Um, I mentioned offline before this call, I, I just had a call with a, a comic book publisher yesterday about it. And so he's going to be helping me scope it out and potentially right. hire the right talent for it. Um, but obviously we've got to build the IP. And so the story, I'm just gonna give away a little bit. I'm not gonna give away the whole issue, but the story is that there was, <laughs> there was this anti-terrorist organization of you know the best of the best. And these new bad guys, this new enemy threat emerges and basically makes them all disappear. I mean, they, they leave traces of blood and, and the little skull image and stuff like that. There's, there's traces. They wanted people to know who did it, but basically consider the entire good guy unit disappeared. And so they're recalling the previous guys from the unit to reform and figure out who this new threat is awesome. and neutralize it. Yeah. So, so the recall, it's not just about recalling the creators and getting them to make cool ring figures again in the storyline. It's about bringing back the previous generation of the anti-terrorist team Brilliant. to replace the current anti-terrorist team, which just got decimated by this new emerging threat. So there's Joe, man, Joe's just brilliant. Joe's been coming up with the stuff. I've just been playing editor. I would say like, he's the writer right now and I'm the editor, but I'm, I'm fired up like just reading the script. I want to share it with everybody right now, but it's like, no, you shouldn't do that. Like, well, you gave us an, a, a, you know, pretty much a bombshell right there. So that's appreciated. And, and I haven't talked with anybody about that yet other than yeah. Joe, like he's, yeah, and constant I, communication. That's yeah. what's up. Hey, speaking of vomit on the page, I created, <laughs> is it, I, you said it's too late, but there's going to be a year two for Operation Recall. Right. So, so what we did was we took 177 submissions, right? And we narrowed yeah. it down to the top 16. So the 17th figure is Rotello and the 18th figure is a super secret figure that I don't want to spoil unless we get there in the Kickstarter. 
but it's huge. Like you guys will want an O-ring version of this figure in your collection, trust me. Um, so that's the 18. Beyond that, the creators have selected like the secondary 16. So I've got to ask them, do we, do we want to roll with the secondary 16 or do we want to put out the call for submissions to the community and do that process again of going through? So I'm going to put it to them as to whether or not year two features the second 16. Yeah. It could be year three. I don't want to shoot down your dreams, man. Like, show me what you got. What you got? All right. All right. All right. All right. So I was bored on <laughs> set. It was a 16 hour day and I had a lot of downtime. And I sent these guys the, uh, you know, that I'd never done this shit before. I always have thoughts, but I'm too lazy to do it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm doing an Operation Recall character. Did anyone ever submit a character in a six inch, as a six inch figure and being like, can you make, did anybody do that? Did anybody send you an actual action figure and be like, make it three and three fourths? No, but I got one custom of a 12 inch figure where they oh, kind of kit, oh. they kit bashed it together and took some photos oh. of it. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So, all right, here he is. It's not, I'm not like these guys. I don't paint. It's a kit bash, but it's not, you know, if I had a month with it, it'd be better, but they like it though. It's night raid. So he's nice. inspired by hit and run. And of yep. course, Eric Killmonger. And yep. uh, he's a para, he's a para guy, but he's gang unit too, because he grew up Brooklyn around mm -hmm. gangs. Family was murdered by gangs. And uh, he's uh, but he's, he's got a mission. He joined the army and he's, he's also gang unit on the side, a side hustle. And Love it. Uh, yeah, man, he's just like, he's got it all. So he's kind of, you know, little snake eyes, little hit and run and, and I want more flair. I would have like a smart watch and like a body cam. And like, he wants people on social media to know he's taking people down. So I think <laughs> what I like about him. He's, he's, I'm just imagining, you know, Michael B. Jordan, of course we can't do the, you know, the face, facial uh, recognition or whatever, but I can imagine yep. playing this character really right. just, uh, out there, man, having a good time, but also you know, it, it, every night he comes home and it hurts him, you know, knowing what he's yeah. doing too. So there's duality in it, but yeah, nice. I, think, I think it's cool. He's got the, you know, kind of the, I love the, uh, he, he could scale down the buildings, but he also, it's, he, he played some Mortal Kombat in the arcades as a kid in Brooklyn. Yeah. So, get over here. Get over here. But you know, he'll have his own, he'll have his own theme, but that's just, yeah. the, that's the whip right now. But that's I awesome, man. Show it and submit it. I had some time. So there it is. And that's right. totally applicable. So we had a couple people that took photos of their custom figures and maybe wrote up, you know, bio or something like that. And one of them got selected. So that's that's an, a that's a totally, you know, that's fair game. That is a medium that we will accept. Yeah, because I don't draw. Photos. So I'm like, right. I want to participate, but this is yep. my way of drawing is just putting a bunch of pieces together of figures and make it somebody yep. up. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, don't get photos of customs is, is fair game, man. So I would say for anybody that's listening that feels like they missed the boat. Go to operationrecall.com, sign up to the email list, and if and when we put out a second call for submissions, it'll go out through that channel, so you won't miss it. That's right, yeah, because I mean, Night Raid right now is on the gang unit, but he needs to be recalled to the military. There's a big war right now. There's that silent yeah, war. Yeah, we got this new enemy that's just killing off all the anti-terrorist team members, so. Well, who better to join a silent war than a very loud man with a, with a history? <laughs> he's ready to take him down but anyway that's enough for nice. let's let's talk about my other friends who are far better at customizing toys than me let's talk about customs right now and uh anthony and ryan let's talk with carson let's talk about first we'll ask carson did you are you a customizer yourself are you a fan you know you just said you like customizing but have you customized toys yourself what's your history of custom toys I tend to put my time, my GI Joe, my hobby time into building 3D Joes, right? That's been my passion from 2012 to now. So a decade, we've done over a thousand pages on there. Um, so I've, I'm very focused. My hobby time tends to go into 3D Joes or it goes into the art books. And now it's going into managing Operation Recall. So I, I'm dividing my hobby pie kind of three ways right now. And that's probably as many, as, as many ways as I can divide my hobby time. But that said, uh, I do love customizing. I've always gone to the customizing class at Joe Con and now at Joe Fest. I always have a, a blast doing that. Uh, probably the maybe the one custom that you guys have seen of mine is the old uh, Toys R Us hovercraft that they sold with the really crappy tank that sat inside of it. So I bought that, threw the tank out, 
took the hovercraft apart, painted it Cobra Cobalt Blue, added a bunch of Cobra Moray stickers to it, threw the Cobra Blue his tank in the storage bay, dropped in a couple dozen Vipers around it, and called it the uh, Viper Attack, I believe. Like a, uh, gosh. Anyway, it's on YouTube. I'll send you a link to it. Okay, so you, can, you can that maybe play crazy, that. Yeah. You can maybe play that. I mean, it was a cool boat because there was like a little button you could hit in the back and the fans would not only spin, but they would light up Cobra Red. So I was nice. like, that's a, co- that's a Cobra boat. Like, no, yeah. no brainer. Um, I think I, it's, it's on YouTube and that's probably the most prominent, I guess I would say, custom that I've done. Along with I've the got, Falcon that you received. So what are your favorite pieces that you have? You showed us Falcon from- Oh yeah. So I mean, I, I'm very you? lucky. I'm very lucky, man, that uh, people that appreciate what I do with 3D Joes and the books and everything have sent me some customs. So shout out again, Ray Murphy on the beautiful classified Falcon. That's uh, just gorgeous. I look at it every day. It sits on my GI Joe shelf right there, like up top right there is where I keep my custom figures and I look at them every day. This is a desert kind of chocolate chip BDUs, Lieutenant Falcon uh, that was painted by Matthew LaCroix. Once again, amazing uh, customizer, brilliant painter, also has his own toy line called Strike Force Alpha, which they're taking pre-orders on right now. So if you want to check out more of Matthew's work, I definitely recommend doing the uh, Strike Force Alpha pre-orders. But that BDU, that that chocolate chip, that's so Desert Storm, you know, that's so like yeah. 1992, oh, you know. So that's a that's a beautiful Falcon figure. I have the utmost respect for the uh, the paint work that he does on these guys. So that's a cool one. And uh, I've got another, I'm not so much of a modern four inch collector. I collected them from 2007 to 2012, but this is another uh, four inch custom that I received. And so all these, you know, they, they sit on my shelf. Here's a Tim Finn, uh, not Tim Finn. Uh Oh, I'm going to blank on the name and I apologize for that. <laughs> Tim Shin. How about Tim Shin? All right. So this is a custom Falcon illustration from Tim Shin. Very but uh, so I've got like my custom Falcon shelf. And yep. it, it literally sits like in the middle of my living room. And I, I just treasure those things because, you know, those people think enough of me to make me something and send so, it to me. So and, 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 died right. and you got to think too, this is the guy who went to Joe Con with the Falcon glider strapped to his back that him and his buddy, <laughs> they made, you know, both made one. It was amazing. Yeah. That, so that's my buddy, Joe. The one that wrote the script for Operation Recall was the Viper glider pilot. So he's getting, been my partner, Crab. We, we've been going to conventions since 2012, New Orleans. That was our first show con together. He had been going for years before that. I bought a Sideshow Cobra Commander 12-inch figure off of eBay. And he lived like 15 minutes away from me. And I was like, dude, you want to meet up? He was like, sure. This is kind of weird. <laughs> you know. But we ended up meeting <laughs> up. And now we're like best of friends. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that's the thing about the hobby, man. I, I, I was talking to you guys offline about this before the call, but like some of my best friends are due to this hobby. Like it's a very, it's a healthy way to live your life. We've got creative energy and we've got an awesome brand to put it into. And it's just endless positive experiences. If I, I've found with this, with this hobby, you get out of it, what you put into it, man. So you yeah, meet friends, you know, yeah, you do no, nice I, things. In, in December, I'm heading down to Arizona to hang out with Tony. We're going to go watch some football with Mark from Gridiron. So now I never nice. met either one of you guys in, in person. And it's been, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, the booze fest, I'm sure. But yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be dope football, beer, and Joe's. I mean, you know, yeah. Gridiron. So how can you All go right. wrong? But And that's just that's just how it goes, man. Uh, Chris Cooper, he runs Yojo Outlet, uh, which is a very prominent eBay store. Uh, dude, I think he's got like two or three people running it with him now. Like that's, it's turned into a big operation and that's not even his day job. He does real estate for a living. Uh, but Chris Cooper has been a good fan of the site, a good friend to me, donated a lot of vehicles. He would just ship me boxes and stuff and I would document it for 3D Joe's and then ship it back to him very graciously. Uh, I remember we were coming through to go to uh, Joe Con in Indianapolis. He was like, dude, stop through Cincinnati. And I was like, all right, cool. So me and Joe stopped through Cincinnati. He took us to opening day at the Reds, man. You know? oh, nice. so, so we're just like, you know, drinking beer at a baseball stadium. Like, this is life. This is amazing. I've never met right. this guy in person before. Mm-hmm. We connected through a hobby and then you meet him and he's amazing. His, his basement is just all toys and he's just all good energy about it. And then we go to a baseball game and just have fun. You know, it's so, amazing. It's amazing. The friends you make through this hobby. Absolutely. Uh, so friends, Ryan, uh, show us Show us what you got. So you got any customs, anything you want to show off this week on Welcome to the Terra Drone? <laughs> cool slitter. So I am a Zartan head. I oh, have yeah. pretty much everything Zartan. 
except for the Sigma <laughs> Six. I couldn't pull Jerry on those. But I had to have a cold slither. So gridiron with the great guitar. I get a little amp with it, but just added some tattoos to it. Um, you were talking about Falcon. And so I have to have some sort of Jungle Joe team. So just taking a flint, redoing him. Yeah. I have Roadblock. You know, I got to admit, it's based off Jesse Ventura from Predator. <laughs> And then Duke, who's my sniper. So another gridiron oh, pack out this. kit. This is cool, man. Yeah. Wow. wow. And then the final is Roadblock. Since I had Jesse Ventura, I had to have his running mate from Predator. So two heavy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it. those have been the ones that I've worked on and finished up here. Nice. Um, more to come. Very cool. How about you, Tony? You want to see some customs I've been working on? You know, it's been Cobra heavy. Let me get up over here and go to the display and I'll show oh, you. Here we spoiler, go. spoiler alert for Cobra Convergence. Just make sure you save one or two. <laughs> I know, right? Show us what you got. You know, Carson, oh. we talked about friends, but, you know, with G.I. Joe, I've made friends from South Africa, from Australia, Crazy. Belgium, Great Britain, Canada, Mexico. It, it's just crazy how many people from all over the world love this brand. Absolutely. I, you know, my last name's Metaxas. I had somebody reach out from Greece and they were like, anytime you come to Greece, you stay with me. Like I'll show you around. <laughs> they're wow. all over. They're all over, man. And they're loyal. Like we're just, I, I don't know, man, there's something about, cause we're reconnecting with something that was very pure from our youth that takes us back to a simpler, more enjoyable time. And so if you come into a friendship with that vibe, like we're both just vibing on good, good stuff that made us happy as a kid. It's a good starting place for building friendships. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. You ready, Anthony? Yeah. You wanted to, you want me to save the Cobras? Or do you want to, <laughs> you want to see it? <laughs> oh, is that all you got? Is that what you've been working on, right? So, I mean, I, man, yeah. Since, since Tease us guys, with one. Show us one. Tease it and we'll save the rest for next week. Well, you, you've seen the one I just, I just made. Hold on. Oh, there he is. I got to pin your camera. I want to see that. Bit. Let me see. There we go. Oh, snap. You see the commander? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why you don't feel the need to back the hits. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got that stuff. Yeah. He's you got his own Com stretch goals. Yeah. Wow. You see, you see Copperhead back there? Oh, dear. Looking good, man. I see the eels too, brother. Woo. Oh, yeah. We. Yeah. Good it's God. I need, I need the eels in my life, man. Oh, heck yeah. And then there's just a bunch of other ones I've done. Mm -hmm. Wow, torpedo looks amazing. They did. They did announce torpedo finally, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Wow. Which, if we're getting torpedo, that means we've got to be getting an eel, eel sometime. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. got to have somebody to fight. Tony, man, this is amazing. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Good is. lord. Yeah. So, Tony, I've got to send you. I've got this mm. wrap that is the vinyl, almost like the back metal. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah, for the chrome oh, head and right yeah. to your Cobra oh, Commander. So, so I'll cut cool. you a couple pieces and send it out to you. Wait, yeah. how'd you do that? How'd you do that, Ryan? that? With its vinyl wrap, so mm -hmm. it, it's it's just like the vac metal color. So it's mm -hmm. for cars, mm -hmm. but you yep. can cut yep. it and if you heat it up, you nice. can put it right on the Cobra Commander and you actually get that reflective surface. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put it right there. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's going to make, that's just going to complete yours. You, yeah. see, you, see, you see, you see the Megatron in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also Dang did man. it for a, a Viper. because I Is want that to Mark II? Yes, yes. That okay, was so we're way, having way, that. way back, yeah. So Giles is getting one from Mark II, so that was yeah, cool. That's, that worked that's out awesome. nicely. I just got Thank a couple you. of funny kit bashes I did. So Extraction, Tyler Rake. I was like, use a couple. I like that. That's oh, awesome. yeah, that's a good film. I enjoyed that's that awesome. one. So, yeah, oh, that, that, yeah. That, that, uh, that film's awesome, yeah. Yeah, and then I thought this was a cool way to use the grunt. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Like, Those Valiverse figs are great for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. That's how I made nice. my Airborne with one of those uh, Valiverse figs. Oh, yeah, yeah, Condor, yeah. Yeah, Condor, yeah. Yeah, he's a good base for Airborne. Mm -hmm. So right. has anybody made a Budo yet? I have not. Uh, I think okay. Giles Gifford, he made a Budo, didn't he, Travis? I'm not sure. I, 
I'm not sure. He was going to be on this episode as well, but he is on vacation. He's enjoying it. So. Yeah. I always have plans for customs. I just don't, like I said, carve out the time for it. But uh, uh, let's see, the articulated icons line from Fwoosh. I picked up two different types, two different colors of samurai that were the two key colors for Buddha. Oh, yeah. And all I have to do is break apart those figures and then recombine them to combine those two colors. Yep. And I think I'll, I'll have a really good base for Buddha with just a few paint apps. So sick. Oh, I'll have to those, see it the next time we have you on. <laughs> yeah, those those push figures are nice too because they actually are kind of easy to get them to pop apart. So nice. Do some quick kick fashion with them and stuff. Oh man, cool. yeah, they're easy. Mm -hmm. Carson, we've had you for quite a while, but let's have some closing thoughts on Operation Recall. If you want to talk about like the book, the Blu-ray, stretch goals, sure. the future of this. Uh, hey, will there be ever be, can there ever be a six inch Operation Recall? Because then I think both of these guys would submit like within five, 10 minutes. <laughs> so that's what I was yeah, going to ask. I, I was thinking in a, I was thinking in a different direction. So I was thinking that the ideas come in, go through the creative team. We make the O-rings and then we license that IP to a six inch maker, Bobby Bala. Yeah, I said it. Or, or Marauders. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I've already talked to Bobby about it, so I wouldn't pull that away okay. from him. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't pull that away from him. Yep. Nice. So, I mean, Rotella was a dream of mine since I was 10 years old. And if I could get him in six inch format, hell yeah, I want him in six inch format. And, oh. uh, you know, Bobby's a friend of mine. And so I've already had that conversation. Now, whether or not it might go whatever direction, I don't want to predict, you know, down the road, but do, do know that I've already opened the communication lines and that I would love to see six inch versions, but I think they've got to go through the creative team first to refine the concept and, and make that, you're not going to get the same, I'm not saying, you know, Bobby's not creative or Marauder John's not creative or their teams that they have, because I know they all work with a bunch of creative individuals as well. But my goal with Operation Recall was to plug in the original creatives and put them back to work and, you know, let them do what they do best. And so I think that's got to go through them and become O-ring first and then be kind of modernized and, and transformed in a six inch scale. I think that's the right process. Now, Adam's work with the accessories, that pretty much could translate to six inch. I don't know that you're going to add a whole hell of a lot more detail to those before you even translate that. So it might be as simple as, just doing the figure translation from that old school hand sculpted. I didn't show this, but this is a resin copy of Rotello with the helmet on with the communications oh, helmet. Awesome. So you guys can get a, a feel for that. He's just got some pegs in holding them together. Mm -hmm. But so taking this figure, which is roughly uh, six, let's see, seven and a half inches, um, translating this into that hyper detailed, you know, six inch format would be a lot of fun to watch. I want that to happen first though. Well, maybe we'll get okay. Anthony on the call before they, they make it official. Just the, some mock-ups would be fun. So, right. Uh, well, I've already I've already planned on doing a Rotello in the six inch because that spirit buck is perfect. Nice. And then it's just you know, dude, going in. I can't wait to see it. Please do that. Yeah, oh, yeah. That. I was. I, I, I bought another carrot just for the head because I think it will be perfect for. No. The tellos, the the head, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can knock this out. No, you yeah. heard it here first. Yeah. We got Carson's approval to do six inch now. Please, <laughs> please, operation recall. See, and, I, and I mean, said, honestly, please. if we yeah. want to get it out affordably to the community, it would behoove us to to think like, okay, if we're gonna go with the Valiverse route, or I mean, let's be honest, Marauder doesn't have a six inch library of no. pieces and parts available right. yet. So if we wanted to do a Rotello not on the cheap, we'll make some new parts, but we might be able to reuse some parts like Bobby's been doing a lot with his figures. Uh, we could get to a Rotello much faster and more affordably by going with a six inch figure producer that has an extensive archive, right? So all we have to do is basically take these two up accessories. We've already got the Sig Sauer with the removable suppressor and the uh, removable mags like ready to go for that six inch scale, right? Mm -hmm. So all we need is the figure, in my opinion. I mean, you know, I don't know. You guys might look at these accessories and say, nah, you need a little more detail. But it's a conversation to be had, and it's definitely something that I want to do. Awesome. Yeah. That's dope. That's so cool. I think that's a perfect way to end this, guys. That was, uh, All right. that was really great. Thank you so much. So, for look, on. here's my ask. Uh, everybody that hasn't jumped in on Operation Recall yet, please jump in. Uh, this is like a once-in-a-lifetime lightning-in-a-bottle opportunity to get these old creators plugged back in and making new figures. We're doing it. It's happening. 
the folders with all the submissions are going out to them overnight and tomorrow. I spent this weekend kind of printing up all their packets and everything. So this is this is happening. It's in progress. Rotello looks amazing. Uh, if you look at the initial sketch of Rotello that I did as a 10 year old versus where we ended up with this, just picture the other 16 concepts, all the progress that's going to be made and how those concepts are going to be refined and how awesome it's going to be at the end state of this. We need you guys to show us that you want it to happen, right? Uh, yeah. Skin in the game, I've got 20 grand skin in the game. So what I'm asking <laughs> from all you guys is like throw 400 bucks at it, man. Just believe in it and go for the all in 18. Help us get there. We've already unlocked wave one. We're coming close on unlocking our second figure of wave two. We'll hit that at 180. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's my goal. Rotello's a freebie, so he already started out. So we're we're seven figures in now out yep. of the potential 18. So if you're on the fence, let's make it happen, man. This is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity to put these guys back to work. So well, I got my five on it. So I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. You got it. I'm just up in mind right now as we speak. Oh, I appreciate it, right. I appreciate it. Nice. nice. All right, guys. It's, it's really, it's really lightning in a bottle, man. We got to, we got to strike while the iron's hot on this. It's you know? exciting. We're, they're creating a brand new gi joe for you guys so do it mm -hmm. do it the intellectual now. property is going to be tight too man if you i wish you guys i wish i could go ahead and share the storyline with you because i know that would drum up excitement too but we'll we'll reveal it in the right time in the right medium yep exactly uh i, I don't know i'm i'm at a loss for words man this has been an incredible episode and i can't thank carson enough brian thank you again thank you tony we'll see you guys yep. next week both of you guys next week on cobra convergence six so Shout out to HCC788, the Hooded Cobra Commander. He was on last episode, so go see That's it. Nice. it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're really, it's a great time to be a Joe fan. And uh, it's its unbelievable. Finally, Carson, two and a half years, we got to connect and do an incredible <laughs> show. Thanks for sharing all the information. About well, Trav, I, I appreciate your patience man. with me, man. Uh, Ryan, I appreciate the good energy, man. The support, obviously, for the Kickstarter. Tony, you're a freaking beast, man. I can't wait <laughs> to see more of your customs, dude. That was yes, incredible. Sir. Thank so, you. You guys keep up the good work, man. It was a good show. Yeah, we'll see you again, of course. You'll be back. And next time, it'll be a toy kind of mood. But for the Terradrome, Episode 7, I'm Travis Moody. And for the gang, we'll see you this week. Cobra Convergence and Comic-Con. Peace. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe.